Atomic Automation includes a powerful notification solution for comprehensive service management. Notifications can be scheduled, sent selectively to users, or triggered based on certain occurrences like job events. There's four types of templates to create notification objects, alarm, mail, SLM, and standards. Each template provides a specific set of configuration options. A standard template has no specific configuration. The email template is pre-configured for email. The alarm is pre-configured to capture certain values like the job ID. The service level management template is tied to another object called the service level object and therefore we're keeping it out of scope. You're also free to create your own notification templates with the appropriate privileges. One of the options is the type of message that the notification will send. There are four types, email, message, request, and alert. The type of message determines the behavior of the notification object. A message is a basic online request, which recipients can acknowledge with an OK button. A request prompts the recipient to perform a task and provides additional options like email and SNMP. The request prompt is of the yes or no type to indicate whether the recipient is taking ownership or not. An alert notifies the user of some event and can be acknowledged or rejected with an accept or reject prompt. By escalation, we mean configuring an alert to prompt its recipient to perform certain actions and trigger yet another notification to another recipient if the original notification is either ignored or rejected. The second notification is embedded in the first. In this example, we set up a process whereby when an SAP job fails, a notification called call abort executes. This notification is an alert which allows for escalation, both based on time ignored or rejection. Operations are notified that a job in SAP failed. If operations do not acknowledge, the notification is escalated after two hours. Operations could also decide that this failure is not their responsibility and reject it. In both cases, escalation takes place and a new notification called Call ESC First is triggered. This is a request sent to the owner of the job. Note that notifications of type requests cannot be rejected. The job owner has to handle it. However, let's imagine a situation where this person is out sick all day. After 20 minutes, the notification is again escalated with a message notification call ESC seconds. No escalation is possible because we have reached the highest level in the service workflow and authority in the SAP hierarchy. The notification is sent to the SAP administrator after 20 minutes. So this is a comprehensive diagram of the notification or call objects. There are four types and each has associated behaviors. We'll look at them in ascending order from the notification type with the least complexity to the most. The simplest type is the email. It always sends an email but does not offer the possibility of any other behavior. Next is the message which can send an email or SNMP, has a simple OK prompt which can be accepted or ignored and has no escalation. Next is the request. It includes email and SNMP options, offers a yes no prompt, but mostly for reporting capabilities since this prompt triggers nothing other than the successful completion or failure of the executed notification. Escalation is time-based only. If the request is ignored after a certain time, it's escalated. Finally, the alert is the most complex. In addition to the email and SNMP options, it offers an accept reject prompt, which enables the creation of more sophisticated service management workflows, whereby a user can accept a task and then notify when the task is done with the done option, or the user can reject the alert, which escalates it. Like the request, the alert can be escalated based on time. In this video, we create a standard email notification and add a recipient, subject, body, and priority. Then we'll create two message notifications triggered by an escalated alert and request respectively. We execute the request and the alert to show the escalation in action. We demonstrate how to embed notifications in other objects like workflows. Finally, we'll show how email and alarm templates are different from the standard templates, specifically with regard to the script page.
we open the process assembly perspective, which is dedicated to configuration, as well as object design and development. We recommend the use of folders for object types to keep the environment organized and tidy. All notification templates are built on the standard notification, which has no script configuration. Let's start there. We recommend using the title field to enter a description. It just makes searching our objects a lot easier. Irrespective of type, all notifications have the recipient fields. In this field, we enter users, which are defined as user objects in Atomic Automation and are created in the administrator tools. Although this is out of scope, these users can include email addresses. When a notification is sent to one of them, that person will always see the notification in the request messages and will be able to interact with it. However, if the SNMP integration has been set up and the notification includes email, they'll also receive the email. It's possible to add a calendar to the notification. This is a filtering mechanism. It means that the notification is only issued on days which are designated by the selected calendar. The message component is available in all notification types. Here we can add a subject and body. This forms the substance of a possible email being sent. The priority level does not shape any behavior. It's only there for information purposes in the sense that it will determine the type of icon associated to the notification in the request window. High has a red exclamation mark, normal has nothing, and low has a blue arrow pointing down. These are the notification message types. We start with the simplest, which is the email. This type of notification message has no settings because it can't do anything but send emails. Note that if the notification is associated to a jobs object, you can attach the report of the job execution using a variable called ucCauseNR. You can also add other attachments found on the file system by adding a path and file name, for example, a file containing instructions on how to handle a job failure. The standard notification has an empty process page. It includes no pre-configured code to execute with the executed notification. This will change when we consider the other templates. In the next section, we create two message notifications which are triggered by escalation, first by a request, then by an alert. We execute the latter two and see the messages execute as a result of the escalation. Remember that a request escalation is time-based only, whereas the alert can be rejected, which triggers the embedded notification. First, we create the two messages.
We duplicate this notification three times to create our new objects. We have two message type notifications. Let's create the request and alert. We modify the properties of each of these. Whereas emails and messages had no escalation settings, the alert allows for escalation. We change to one no response. There are two settings. The first stipulates the time span the alert can be ignored before the escalation is triggered. The second is the embedded notification, in other words, the notification that will execute when escalation takes place. Remember that for alerts, escalation can also happen when the alert is rejected. We select the message that we want to associate with the alert. Note this option. When we check this, escalation will not only execute the embedded notification, it will also deactivate the original alert. Anyone assigned as a recipient will be off the hook and will no longer be notified. We execute the request and alert. Obviously, manual execution of notifications only happens in testing procedures. In a production setting, you'd want to trigger these through certain events like job and workflow failures. The request is flashed to us since we are the Atomic slash Atomic user. All notification executions are managed in the request window. As explained earlier, requests only offer a yes or no prompt. They cannot be rejected. Escalation is time-based only. Since we used a five minute delay, we wait five minutes. A full five minutes have gone by, the embedded notification is executed as a result of the request that was ignored. We see the simple OK prompt. We get confirmation that escalation took place after five minutes in the messages window. Alerts have a different prompt. In this case, the user is assigned a task, which can be accepted or rejected, which sets off escalation. Notifications come with three buttons. Once accepted, the notification enters into a chain of ownership, and the current owner of the alert can read messages contained in the notification, add comments, or see who else is included in the list of recipients. We reject the alerts. The escalation message is immediately executed.
now that we know how to design notifications, we need to understand how they're deployed in production. For this, we have a workflow with a Unix we fail deliberately. We want the notification to trigger upon failure of the workflow. We need to establish what constitutes workflow success and failing that, which notification to execute. We use the attributes page. The workflow has a drop-down menu, and we use it to determine what status sets the overall status of the workflow. For the entire workflow to be successful, we decide that it needs an OK status, meaning that all jobs in that workflow ended OK. When we do this, a second drop-down appears. We choose our notification. Up to this point, we use the standard notification, which was the baseline call object, with no alterations. Let's consider the other templates. We select Alarm and head to the Process page. The Process page is what differentiates the Alarm notification from the standard one. It contains pre-programmed code and relies on standard engine variables which exists for every instance of an execution. They include the operator ID, basically the user, the run ID, status, return code, atomic system name, client number, date, and all other pertinent information. As an alarm, the notification is already pre-configured to pass all the relevant information, and it also offers the option of entering values to manually set the status of the associated object, like a job. Because we capture the user in the variable, you don't need to specify a recipient.